Hello everyone. In chapter two, we focus on a job order costing system. Perhaps you're asking, what is a job order costing system? This is a system where companies are going to assign costs to each unique job. When companies offer many different products that are produced within a period, then now we're going to look at each individual job and look at how much material does each job require? How much labor does each job require? How much overhead costs should be assigned to each individual job? So we're going to assign costs to job A, job B, job C, etc. We're going to learn how do you assign costs, use what's called a job order costing system. Example of companies that would use a job order cost and think about Boeing. Boeing, the aircraft manufacturing company, they're making different types of airplanes. We're going to figure out what would be the cost assigned to the making of each individual airplane. Or right, think about Walt Disney. Of course, they're making different type of movies. Would a job order costing system we focus on the cause that's going to be assigned to each movie that we're going to produce when using a job order costing system. Okay, so we have material costs, we have labor costs, and we also have overhead costs. With a job order costing system, we're going to figure out how much material should be assigned to job number one. How much labor should be assigned to job number one? How much overhead costs should be assigned to job number one? We do the same things for job number two and for job number three. Now you think about manufacturing overhead. That would include any indirect material costs, any indirect labor costs, and other manufacturing costs except for direct materials, and direct labor. In this chapter, we're going to learn how do you assign manufacturing overhead to each individual job. So we have what's called a job cost sheet. So this job is entitled A-143, okay? We're gonna focus on the amount of costs we're going to assign to this job then job number A-143, we'll look at the material costs we're going to assign, we'll look at the labor costs we're going to assign, as well as the manufacturing overhead costs. Okay, ready to get started? Let's go. We'll first look at the materials that we're going to purchase for this job. So we purchase 2 by 4 12 feet this material, one by six, 12 feet, this is on the quantity. So we see that the total material cost equals $116. The material cost is transferred over to the job cost sheet for job A-143. Then we have our labor cost. The employee spent a total of eight hours on this job at a rate of $15 per hour. So the total labor cost will be $120. So we're now going to assign the direct labor cost to job A-143. So it's pretty simple to assign direct material costs and direct labor costs. Those amounts are going to be specific. Now, when it comes to manufacturing overhead, we want to first determine what's called a predetermined overhead rate a predetermined overhead rate let's talk about that what we're saying here is how much of the indirect labor costs how much of the indirect material costs and other manufacturing costs we're going to assign to each individual job we use what's called an allocation base in order to assign overhead costs. The allocation base may be direct labor hours, 
direct labor dollars, or it can even be machine hours. So based upon some type of allocation base, we're going to assign overhead costs to each individual job, okay? So the reason why we have an allocation base, because often it is impossible to trace overhead costs to a particular job, meaning that we're not quite sure the amount of indirect material that should be assigned to one particular job. Or think about the indirect labor cost. Think about a manufacturing plant, and we have a security guard inside the manufacturing plant. We're saying how much of that person's salary or wages should be assigned to each individual job. We have no way of knowing that. That's why we use what we call an allocation base. And with the allocation base, we're going to assign cost to each individual job. Okay? So we have a formula to determine what's called the POHR, which stands for the predetermined overhead rate. Again, POHR stands for the predetermined overhead rate. We look at the estimated total manufacturing overhead cost for the coming period. So we'll say for the year of 2020, what is our total estimated overhead cost? We'll then look at the estimated total units that we're going to have in the allocation basis. Again, the allocation basis may be machine hours. It may be direct labor hours. It may be direct labor costs. So we may say, what is the total number of machine hours we expect to use in, say, 2020? And based upon the total manufacturing overhead cost, based upon the estimated total allocation basis, we're going to determine a predetermined overhead rate. So if we're saying we're going to assign overhead costs based upon machine hours, we're going to say for each machine hour used, we're going to assign overhead costs of X amount of dollars. Okay? So the reason why we have a predetermined overhead rate is by, because you don't know the actual overhead cost until the end of the period. Because at that point, we know what we spend for indirect material, indirect labor, as well as other manufacturing costs. Well, that's too late. Because we have to assign product costs at the beginning of the period. Therefore, we're going to estimate the overhead cost to be assigned to each product based upon a predetermined overhead rate. We will learn what happens when the overhead applied is more or less than the actual overhead. We'll cover that when we get to Chapter 3. All right? So remember this formula that we looked at back in Chapter 1 that says Y equals A plus BX. Y would be the total manufacturing overhead cost. A is the estimated fixed overhead cost. B is the estimated variable overhead cost on a per unit basis. And X is the estimated total amount of the allocation base. So again, the B would be the variable rate, say, per machine hour. And based upon the number of machine hours that took place, and based upon the fixed overhead cost, that will determine the total overhead cost to be recognized for an actual company. Let's do some actual calculations, shall we? Okay. Let's say that we have a company that requires 160,000 direct labor hours to meet the production level. Okay? So it'll take 160,000 direct labor hours to meet the production level. In addition, there's $200,000 in total fixed overhead cost. The verbal overhead cost is two dollars and 75 cents per direct labor hour so we expect for the year that we're going to there will be there will be a total of 160,000 direct labor hours for the year the fixed overhead cost for the year is two hundred thousand dollars and the variable overhead cost is two dollars and 75 cents per direct labor hours 
So we'll now take this information, put into our formula that says y equals a plus bx. A would be the fixed overhead cost of $200,000. The variable rate is $275 cent per direct labor hour. And again, we estimate for the year that we total of 160,000 direct labor hours. So multiply the rate per hour times direct labor hours, that gives a total of $440,000. So we estimate for the year, our total manufacturing cost would be $640,000 is the estimated amount for the year. Now we estimate that we're going to have a total of 160,000 direct labor hours for the year. Therefore, our predetermined overhead rate for the year is going to be $4 per direct labor hour. This means that we are going to assign overhead cost to each job based upon the number of direct labor hours that was used for each of these jobs. Okay, so now that we have our predetermined overhead rate, we can now assign a cost to each individual job. Okay, so going back to job A-143, for this particular job, notice that there was a total of eight hours to complete this job. Now remember, the predetermined overhead rate is $4 per direct labor hour. If you take the eight hours times the overhead rate of $4, the total overhead cost of time to job A-143 would equal $32. Now the total cost for this job is $268. We add in the material cost, the labor cost, and the overhead cost. But notice that we produce two units for job A-143. We produce two of the wooden cargo crate. Since the total cost was $268 and we produced two units, that means our unit product cost is $134. So the job cost sheet will show us the total cost and it shows us the unit product cost. So in this case, again, the total cost was $268 but we produce two units, therefore our unit product cost is $134 per unit. Okay, so stay tuned for the second video, which will focus more on how to use a job order cost system.